Hey guys, Gabrielle here with you today to bring you an introduction to design created with a non-designer in mind. If you're just starting out or want to learn design, this is the video for you. So let's get started. We will cover a few things about design as well as some basic tools you will want to have. We'll start with design first. We have all heard the word design before, but what exactly is it? According to Merriam-Webster's dictionary, design is to plan and make decisions about something that is being built or created. But design is so much more than the blueprints and production sheets. Design is a mixture of many elements including the basic principles and building blocks like contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity. Not to mention your own personal creativity that you bring to the project. Now that we have that out of the way, it should be noted that design usually comes in two formats, print and digital. Print design includes items like brochures and business cards, while digital involves designing things for online use, like websites. Don't worry about becoming a stellar artist off the bat to design for either format, so that will all come within time and practice. But before you even get to designing, you need to understand four principal concepts when it comes to design. These four principles are contrast, repetition, alignment, and proximity, all which I have mentioned before. First, we have contrast. This idea simply states that you want to add differentiation between your elements. This can be easily achieved by using contrasting colors, sizes, weights, and typeface within your design. Repetition is exactly how it sounds and goes hand in hand with the concept of keeping things consistent. With repetition, you simply want to repeat elements of your design throughout the entirety of your project to keep cohesion. Using alignment, you must make sure to align like elements in order to strengthen your overall design. This is pretty much in the same vein as when you create a visual hierarchy. And in regards to proximity, you'll need to utilize your white space or negative space in a manner that gives you a visually appealing design by grouping like elements together but maintaining breathing room. That's easy enough, right? Just to make sure you have a firm understanding of these principles, let's look at a couple of sites. We will begin by looking at names for change first. This website perfectly illustrates the four principles of design, but we will focus on the use of contrast and repetition. Contrast is utilized here by the choice of colors used for each item in the rectangles, and you have repetition with the use of shapes and detail throughout the entirety of the site. The Equator site does a great job with their alignment and serves as a perfect example. Here, their elements are placed in an appealing manner, which helps lead the eye from section to section. Last but not least in our real-world examples is how the Legwork Studio website uses proximity. Remember that proximity works best when grouping similar elements together. Here, notice how all of the written content is placed relatively close together, effectively isolating it from the illustration while utilizing the available white space for a clean overall look. Now that we have gone over what design is along with the four principles, it's time to talk about the tools. Just like in any other field, you need certain equipment to help you along the way. There are hundreds of designer tools available out there, but I want to talk about eight essential tools that you generally need when you're starting out. First you need yourself a good computer. This can be a desktop or a laptop. It really doesn't matter. Just make sure it's fast and reliable. You'll also want to get yourself a graphic tablet or a mouse as this will make designing a lot easier and it makes everything more precise. Whiteboards or ample wall space is ideal to allow you to physically rearrange and record your thoughts when away from the computer. Notebooks are also beneficial as well. You'll definitely need yourself a good workspace. A large desk or a flat surface that is clean is important for a designer. You also want to make sure that you have yourself some design software. This is a must if you plan on being successful. The software you choose is solely up to you, but there's many to choose from including free and premium. When starting out, it will also be helpful for you to have at least one design oriented book on hand so you can use it as a guide or just have it on hand for reference. While you might not need one right away, you'll definitely want to have yourself a color palette set or a generator. Last but not least, you need drawing utensils. This can be anything from pencils to markers to pens or whatever you prefer. Okay, now that we have covered the basics, it's time to recap on today's lesson. We know that design transcends a simple definition and is a combination of good design practices and your own creativity. Adding contrast means to create visual differences. Good repetition means to add repeated elements throughout your design. Aligning elements establish hierarchy and balance, while proximity is all about grouping like elements together. Remember that your design tools matter just as much as your principles do. 
a good designer starter kit should feature a reliable computer, a mouse or graphic tablet, a whiteboard or wall space, a desk to work on, some type of graphic software, at least one design related book, an on hand color palette, and of course some art supplies. Now with your newfound knowledge, you are one step closer on your journey to becoming a designer.